Okay, great. Hmm. Let me know if you can hear me clearly without any traffic noise. Type A in the chat box. Okay, good. All right, great. Got it. Let's begin. Om Namah Shivaya. Welcome everybody to this episode of the Spiritual Mango, where we're going to talk about how sunshine every day can keep the doctor and your therapist away. Honestly, everything that heals you is free and you shouldn't be paying money to get healed. It's completely free. Only because of ignorance, people continue to suffer with various mental and physical diseases, making bad choices in their life and not being able to create a good story of their life, which acts as a blueprint as you'll see during this lecture. Okay, so let's uh, start right away. All right. Sunshine every day keeps your doctor and your therapist away. Let's start by understanding the greatest dependence. Our environment is our greatest dependence, okay? You cannot separate an organism from the environment and expect it to live. If you take a fish out of water, it's going to die soon. Similarly, if you put a man inside water, he's going to die soon, okay? So our environment is very important for our survival. Life is theorized to have originated in the hydrogen vents on the bottom of the ocean in what are called white smokers. And in these environments, spontaneously, fatty acids and fatty alcohols are getting created from the gases that come out of that environment. There is also a very natural proton gradient or a potential difference between the inside of the vent and the outside of the vent. This acts as energy to create order of the protoplasm and the cell walls it just gets spontaneously created. And in many lab experiments, this has happened that bacteria suddenly got created. And there is a theory that this is what we do in our stomach. We don't need to eat a whole lot of probiotics to get gut microbiome. It's readily and spontaneously created given the right voltage in your body. Okay. And uh, also, I think the pressures matter at that point. But that went on, that became the uh, common universal ancestor, which we call Luca, which then went on to become three categories of beings, uh, the archaea, the bacteria, and us eukaryotes. Eukaryotes are the ones that have a nucleus in the cell, like us. All multicellular organisms, including plants, are called eukaryotes. This is all one continuum of life, and it's happening because of certain energetic conditions and environments. So you cannot remove yourself from this environment and expect yourself to have health. So some pioneers like Nick Lane are very close to building a reactor that gives rise to single cell organisms. And can you imagine we can create life if we just create the environment? And uh, so the, the water that is there in this environment acts as a battery because the water gets into its fourth phase under these conditions and it becomes structured water. Whatever is toxic in your environment will eventually kill you and damage you. So what are the kinds of toxins? Let's have a look at that. Toxic light. There can be light that's good for us like sunlight and light that's bad for us like the lights coming from our LED screens and LED bulbs. Uh, the incandescent lights were certainly much better, less flicker, but this flicker is creating a lot of stress inside our biology. From morning to evening, we are before flickering lights. So that's one part of the problem. The other part is that the LED screens cut out the other important wavelengths of light. Now, sunlight is mostly red. 
it has a little blue, very little blue. It has more red and purple. But when you wear spectacles and things like that, you cut off, you cut off that light, and some of this light does not penetrate into clothes. So when we wear clothes, we are reflecting that light back. It's not allowing it to come into our body. Some lights have a really penetrative effect, like blue light penetrates through your skin. And if you notice my face, I have got white hair only over here and here. This is the place that has been exposed to blue light. And I've got white hair on my chest here, but not on my back. My back doesn't have white hair. So everywhere where I'm getting white hair, it's those areas that have been greatly exposed uh, to blue light. The top of my head is all white, but the back of my head is all black. And you can see people developing uh, conditions like vitiligo and um, psoriasis and all of these in places where the blue light is hitting them the most. It can also be electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation, I mean, there's a lot blue light does, okay? It does a, a lot of other bad things like it raises your blood sugar and all of that. We'll get into it. Um, but there's also toxic electromagnetic frequencies like the Wi-Fi, which you should switch off when you sleep at night and then try to be in such toxic environments minimum. Now, if you work in a place where there's, you know, in, you know, the environment of an office is perfect for disease because it's got electromagnetic radiation and it's also got toxic light. And guess what else is a perfect place to be, to have disease? The inside of a hospital, okay? I don't know why doctors are not aware of this, but it's not their fault. They've been educated that way, okay? Nobody deliberately makes you sick. They are indeed trying to heal, to heal you after taking an oath to only heal people. It's called the Hippocratic Oath. But I do believe in the sincerity of doctors. But I, I do think that everybody's got to wake up now and start understanding more about light and electromagnetic frequencies, which are the major cause of disease in modern times. All of the diseases came after the invention of the light bulb. All of these modern diseases, diabetes, cancer, etc. They come out of their kidney failure, heart attacks, blood pressure. All of these problems, and including high cholesterol, and I'll tell you how that is later, comes from the modern environments that we live in. Okay, Other environmental factors are toxic chemicals and microplastics, which we have an abundance of in our environment. So if you start drinking water with merely a UV filter to kill the bacteria, you're going to still take in the fluoride, you're still going to take in the glyphosate, you're still going to take in the microplastics unless you use an RO. So in today's world, it's very difficult to have health if you are drinking tap water, UV filtered water, bore well water, spring water, whatever water. If there is farming above the spring, don't drink the water. But if there's no farms above the spring, like you've gone to Himachal and you can't see anything but maybe one house on top, it's okay to drink that water because there isn't that much chemicals in it. Farming equals chemicals right now. And then on top of that, the foods have certain ingredients. When you look at the ingredients list, you'll recognize the names of certain chemicals and you'll not recognize some things which are numbers like INS32. And you wonder what that is. These are all toxins added to preserve the food so that it doesn't get spoiled. They're called preservatives. And also artificial colors are added to make the food more appealing to the eye. Nothing wrong with that if it didn't poison us, but it poisons us, so it's wrong, okay? I don't mind having beautiful looking food that lasts forever, but not at the cost of my health. So if you look at, if you start reading the labels of everything you buy, you won't buy half the things because you don't recognize these. They are not food. Food does not have all these chemicals. So be careful about chemicals in your food. What about the chemicals in your clothes? The chemicals in your clothes are just as bad. The dyes that are used are also pretty toxic. As far as possible, try to get things that have got natural dyes and they don't have uh, polyesters in them. 100% cotton or 100% jute or any kind of natural fiber is okay to wear. And it has to be breathable. 
and has to allow some light to come in. Okay. So if you hold your shirt to the light and if the light is coming through the shirt, then it's probably a good idea to wear that shirt. But if the shirt is again dyed with, with chemicals and uh, treated with chemicals and also, you know, made out of polyfibers, polyester fibers, like rayon, nylon, etc., then or polycotton, terricotton, all of these things are horrible fabrics to wear because they have endocrine disrupting chemicals. And they can create anything from erectile dysfunction to lack of sleep to uh, mood swings to anything and uh, problems during your period, etc. All of these can, even the light can, even the chemicals can, okay? Uh, let's not underestimate any of these enemies. There are microorganisms like bacteria, protozoans, worms, and archaea, which are present in your food as well. So those who are raw, raw eaters, eaters of raw food, be very careful because you're not cooking those eggs of the worms that are there, the helminths, okay? So these helminths or worms have microscopic eggs that you can't see with your naked eye. And then you make this nice salad and you wonder why your stomach is bad. You can get a tapeworm out of it, okay? Any food that's not cooked properly can give you tapeworms. That's the kind of microorganism environment in which we're living in, which is why many of our ancestors died early before they could invent fire to cook food because of these infections. Some infections have wiped out entire armies, some uh, bacteria. And there are stories, I think it was Napoleon's army that got completely wiped out by a bacterial infection and then that's how he got defeated okay so a lot of things can happen your whole life can get wiped out if you get a tape in your brain so be careful about microorganisms and you'll have health so when you go to temples and they give you the water don't drink it put it on top of your head it's okay but don't drink it if you start drinking sur -sur all the water that's a nice way to fall sick that's how i fell sick once i went to like 10 temples drank all the water came back home and i was sick Okay, but only for a while because my immune system is good. But those who don't have a good immune system, even if you get a virus, you'll start uh, suffering. Viruses are not in this list of harmful. You know why? Because viruses are not harmful. They're actually just DNA information from the environment. So the environment has created this virus just by its potential difference. Now you know it can make nucleotides. So it's created this virus just out of, out of nothing. It comes in, then it starts spreading everywhere. It's like how Apple sends you a software update for your phone. In the same way, nature sends you a software update of what's going on in the world. And if you receive that virus and you get enough sunlight, that will become a software update for you. You'll, you'll get immediate immunity against that. Whatever that virus is warning you against, that's what you're going to get immediate immunity against. But unfortunately, people exposed to blue light and EMF radiations, if they get a virus, they're not able to recover. You need sunlight plus virus to make it an update. If you get only the update, only the virus without the sunlight, you're going to be sick. So viruses are really not a problem. Things like malaria, et cetera, not everyone gets it. Those who are getting enough sunlight and they don't have any artificial lights in their faces, they fall sick only for a day. That's the update. You just have to lie down, you sneeze a bit, you cough a bit, and then you're okay and up the next day. All right? That is why there's no medicine against virus because it's not a disease. You just need to get sunlight and rest, and then you'll be all right. And that's an update. So once in a year or twice in a year, nature does send these updates. Nowadays, I'm not falling sick at all. I do get the updates. Maybe I'll sneeze a bit, and then it's done. Okay? <clears throat> Next and last toxin is toxic people. And they create something called an emotional threat, like a threat of abandonment if you don't listen to them. Like a, <clears throat> like a threat of shame and uh, shaming if you don't listen to them. A threat of ostracism, not talking to you, stonewalling you. So these are called emotional threats. And they come from toxic people. So if you have toxic people in your environment, you can kiss your health goodbye and look for it next birth because these toxic people will drain the life out of you. So you have to learn how to set your boundaries and if people are not willing to fall, follow those boundaries, you'll have to learn how to kick them out of your life. That's the consequence for crossing the boundaries. If there's no consequence like this relationship ends, if you cross this, it's a deal breaker. If you don't feel that this is a deal breaker, then you're going to continue with the deal even though there are lots of things that are uncomfortable for you. 
and this is called modern relationships okay so that's about the environment now let's look at the next item which is the internal clock which is circadian biology the internal clock or circadian biology or clock biology or the circadian clock it tells us two things the time of the day and the time of the year or the season right so we have two ways to sense this our eyes and our gut now don't confuse the circadian clock follow these steps show your body that the day has started by watching the sunrise when you watch the light from the sunrise your eye registers the day has started show your gut the day has started by eating a fatty snack like paneer prawns fish etc uh, in vegetarian there are no fatty snacks except avocado so it's okay to eat avocado okay so that's it like avocado paneer prawns or fish but the reason you should not eat avocado is that it does not grow in your latitude number one it's not a local food and second even though it's a good source of protons you don't know what is the um, i don't know the the season in which it was harvested actually you know because it's you eat it pretty much soon after the harvest that's not an issue with produce it's not an issue you don't have to check if the produce is available to you without any shipping extra shipping charges from across the ocean like dragon fruit you don't you can eat it because it doesn't confuse your gut but if you eat something like avocado in the morning that's a problem okay so try to avoid that <clears throat> Have paneer. If you're vegetarian, take some paneer, fry it maybe with ghee and eat it as soon as you wake up, within half an hour of waking up. Then what happens? Your gut also knows the day has started. Okay? Because what animals do as soon as they wake up is go eat within the first half an hour of waking up. Except humans. Humans are doing intermittent fasting to, to, to lose belly fat. But the belly fat is there because you're not able to utilize the excess cholesterol in your body. You know why? Because cholesterol plus sunlight equals all the hormones that you get. Different frequencies of sunlight plus cholesterol create serotonin, melatonin, uh, your um, dopamine, oxytocin, uh, your cortisol, your testosterone, all the sex hormones starting from DHEA. Everything, estrogens, progesterone, everything is created from cholesterol, which is the basic uh, basic uh, raw material for this okay there are of course vitamins required for this and then this reaction creates all your neuropeptides and it also creates all of your hormones which are the messengers in your body so make sure that you make sure that you eat fat you need it right in the morning and if you get enough sunlight you lose fat Without any exercise, your body will always maintain its weight. My body always maintains a weight of 75 kgs. I don't have to do anything for this. If I go outside and I eat a lot of things, I just like if I eat outside and I know it's toxins, the best way to get rid of it is to have a high redox potential. We'll come to what is that potential. When the potential difference between the inside of the cell and the outside of the cell is high, it allows it to push out toxins and it allows it to take in nutrients. Okay, by the processes of Reduction and oxidation. Yeah, reduction is uh, adding electrons. Oxidation is taking away electrons. Okay, so when we have an adding ability to add and take away uh, electrons in, inside our cells, this is done entirely by the mitochondria. When this process is being done, then we can afford to eat a little bit of toxins. That means I can go out and maybe have a coffee, which has a lot of fluoride, by the way. Coffee and tea have fluoride, like in huge amounts, because these plants pull fluoride from the ground. So that fluoride is like a, a milder version of cyanide. You know what cyanide does? It shuts off all the light signals in your body. It's a dipolar blocker. That means it shuts off all the light signals in your body. And so that's how you immediately die within a few seconds of having cyanide <laughs> electricity off. It's probably the most painless way to die. Okay. But uh, cyanide, uh, uh, cyanide's younger brother is fluoride. So fluoride slowly shuts off. It can't shut off the whole thing because it's a younger brother. It doesn't have that much skill. But it shuts down a lot of your light traveling inside. So early morning, what do people do? Brush their teeth with fluoride. 
Okay, stop doing that. Check the ingredients of your toothpaste and you'll recognize a lot of chemicals. When I saw that I stopped using toothpaste, I just brush. And my mouth doesn't stink because I open my mouth and sit like this, pointing it to the sun and I floss my teeth. If there's any stuck particles, and that's it. You don't have to worry about bad breath at all or even body odor goes away when you start exposing to the sun. Okay. So especially that UV rise, okay? So in the morning, if you go and see the sun sunrise for five minutes, it's enough. It gets the information, the day has started, and that's it. You don't need to go on telling it that the day has started. But two hours after sunrise, make sure to get outside as naked as possible so that you can kickstart the creation of cortisol and other hormones and neuropeptides. So if the sunrise is at 7, around 9, 9 to 11 is the UV rise. This time is good. It's the UV rise. This is also a great time... Um, to get a tan. You know why? Because UV light increases the production of melatonin. If you have a tan, it's a good thing. It means you have excess melatonin. That means you can absorb even in low light conditions. Okay? So that's your your dark skin is going to help you to survive, not being fair and lovely. It's not going to help you to survive. So that's why I start to get this. Now, even white people, they don't become black, but they get tanned. And the tanned white people have better, have a greater amount of melatonin. Melatonin is of three types. It's on the skin and that's the main light absorber. It's the one that takes the light energy and passes it to the other, other cells. It's also lining uh, your gut. You see the lips and other places in your body which are pink are a different kind of melatonin, but they also need light. Okay, They, they are more sensitive towards infrared light and penetrative light that comes into the body. And then you have neuromelatonin. Sorry, not melanin. What am I? Saying? Not melatonin. Melanin. Okay, I'm so sorry. So three types of melanin: the skin melanin, then the pink melanin, and the third one is the neuromelanin, which is there in every nerve. Every nerve works on light. If it absorbs light directly, if you're not giving light to your nerves, you're going to be very sick. Okay. So this two hours of sunrise, as naked as possible, as much as you can. If you start getting burnt, come back into the shade. Your ability to stay in the sun longer and longer will improve. It cannot improve right away because I get a lot of sun. Now I can stay in the sun for two, three hours. It's really no problem. But some people will get sunburned after a while. So the moment you feel the pain, you come back in and your sensitivity will also increase. Now, because of getting this UV sunlight early in the morning, what's happened to my body? And please don't wear your spectacles because they block UV. Okay, most of them have UV blockers in it. And... Um, Please also don't wear Ray-Bans and then sit in the sun. It's no, no point. You might as well not sit in the sun because your eyes will not get that information. And don't wear shades. I know it looks stylish, but it looks stupid to me now when I see people blocking off the light signals to their eye, the super cosmetic nucleus of the eye. When I see that happening, I don't find it sexy anymore. People wearing shades, I find it really stupid. So please don't be stupid. Okay? Now, when you start catching this kind of sun, your battery gets charged. And I'll tell you how in the next slide. Okay. So please buy local produce and eat according to the seasons. Okay. So whatever is available, you eat. Don't look for out of season things that are come from China or from US or from Thailand or wherever. That's not going to be good for us. Unless we live there in their, in their place, then it's okay to eat local. Okay. So you, do, you don't have to go to Thailand and then start eating Indian food. That also doesn't make sense. Start eating the local produce. Don't look for your specific Indian brinjal. You're not going to get it. Okay. So your body locates yourself. It geolocates yourself by the food that you eat. So be very careful about what kind of food you eat and eat according, fresh produce according to the seasons. Now, certain things like meat are available all year round. So you can happily eat them. No need to be confused. But where you need to be scared is about the grains and the cereals that you're eating. You please look up in Google whether they are kharif crops or you know the other type of crops, I forgot. Whether they are harvested in the winter or summer and eat it only during the harvest months, which is two months. I will not eat rice unless it's November, December because that's when rice is harvested. And if I eat it at that time, my body knows what to do with it. If you eat rice in summer, you can be sure you'll get diabetes, okay? So same with wheat. It's also a crop that's to be eaten only in November, December. The rest of the time, look at, look for the harvest season of your local millets and eat those local millets. Don't try to get millets from Uttarakhand if you live in Chennai. Okay? 
Don't get Kudiravali from there. Okay. So grains and cereals, dals also. Be careful and check Google what is the harvest season for Dur dal? What is the harvest season for Masur dal? Every season has a dal. Use only that dal. Don't use a dal out of season. Okay. Please do a little bit of Google. Don't ask me for a food chart. I'm not a health coach. Okay. I'm doing this only because I'm seeing that people can't learn yoga because they're not healthy. That's why I have to do this because if the health itself is a problem, how to teach them yoga? Okay. That's the only reason I'm doing that. I'm not a health coach. Okay. I have no interest in health coaching anyone. So please make your own charts. And if you do make a good chart, send it to me. I'll share it on my social media. Okay. So shut off all sources of artificial light to not confuse your circadian clock after the sunlight is gone. It's supposed to be dark on the earth, but we have made it as bright as sunshine in the night with all of our 12 watt LED bulbs, which uh, throw blue light everywhere in a flicker. And then we're wondering why we're getting stressed as we watch an LED blue screen. We're wondering why we get cancer all night. If you don't make complete darkness, your circadian clock gets confused. Okay. So little cancer is better or more cancer is better. No cancer is better. If you want to completely avoid it, please don't do this blue light business after night. Okay. My mother died like this because of the blue light and her 50 inch LED TV. I didn't know it at the time. I could have saved her if I knew it. But she got such a violent cancer all over her body. That means whole body is getting blue light. Metastized everywhere. Okay. So this is, this is something, you know, you all have to do if you don't want to get this. So don't eat after sunset or your stomach gets confused that it's daytime. Because we are diurnal animals. We're supposed to eat during the day. Nocturnal animals can eat in the night. We are not. Try to understand this. There are no morning person and evening person and night person. All humans are morning person only. Okay? So, uh, don't eat after sunset, not even anything. You can drink water for sure, but don't eat after sunset. Now, your physical, mental and emotional health will recover really fast. In like a week, if you follow this slide, this one side. Get a tan and you can't be sick, remember. Okay? Don't be afraid of tans. Don't put, don't slather yourself with sunscreens and things like that. Okay, that's really a cause of a lot of problems because it blocks the light. And also those chemicals are toxins, endocrine disruptors. Okay. Now let's look at the internal battery, which is structured water. Our cells need a voltage of minus 200 millivolts to repair and to feel energetic. If anybody has energy problems, it's because your voltage in your cells is low. It really is an energy problem. Okay, this voltage is supplied by the structured water in our body. The greater the structured water, the, the greater the uh, exclusion zone. So it forms a zone, all it forms H2O3, two hydrogen, two water molecules, two H2Os come together and form H2O3. It's a structure and it throws one H plus outside, which is a proton. So it throws a proton outside and where it's thrown the proton outside and then here there's, there's a lot of protons and here there's a lot of electrons. The more layers it forms like that, proton, electron, proton, electron, proton, electron, its total uh, exclusion zone increases, okay? So we have structured water inside our muscles and muscles have longitudinal fibers like this. They also have horizontal fibers in between. It's like a ladder, okay? Longitudinal and horizontal fibers. If the horizontal fibers get cut, due to some wrong exercise, lifting more weight than you can or something, if they get cut, then the structured water starts to build there. Boom, boom, boom. That's what we call swelling. Okay. And that's that's the squishy little structured water. It doesn't feel like normal water. This water can be solidified at room temperature and it forms the structure of clouds. Okay. Clouds are actually structured water being structured by the infrared rays of the sun. Uh, it's the water vapor that went up got structured into clouds. Isn't it beautiful? So you can do this in the lab. You can make structured water in the lab and it's a cloud inside water. You'll see the cloud inside water. It looks very beautiful. Okay. And similarly, we have clouds inside ourselves. We are full of clouds. And these clouds kind of expand. Now they're in a liquid state. They're not in a cloud form, but that is a very thick syrupy liquid. It's like, it's like sugar syrup. 
it's as thick as sugar syrup the water inside the muscles but this when this horizontal thing gets cut the structure of the muscle is not able to hold the structured water and it starts swelling so it's important to remove that swelling by compression if you compress and hold it then the the cut the cut uh, muscle horizontal fiber starts to come and try and join again and it joins again then the swelling goes so the more you compress something the faster it's going to be another good thing to do is to directly rub ice on it if you directly rub ice on it then what happens ice when it melts forms structured water for a few moments and then it becomes water so you can rub structured water i mean you can rub uh, an ice cube on it directly don't put it inside it or don't use those pads it's not only the cold that repels it's also the water of the ice which kind of repels but the cold also promotes infrared production inside that area so put making some area cold is equivalent to producing infrared and what does the infrared of the sun do it structures the water right so uh, you have to be little careful it's not the cold that is required for uh, swellings because if you're giving only cold without the melting water of the ice um you might actually increase the structure you might increase the swelling sometimes okay so compression is good uh the the direct cold of ice does something which all those pads can't do all the cooling pads can't do okay and your job right now is to get that water out and i think nothing helps like compression if you just press and hold press and hold the inflamed part for like 5 minutes it will start forming its muscle fibers again and the swelling comes down wherever it is like magic okay so try this and uh, it's important to drain that water out of there so if you squeeze it squeeze it squeeze it the electricity increases because muscles are also piezoelectric so when you squeeze it it produces electricity so the more you squeeze the muscle the more electricity and the solution for all pain and soreness is to squeeze the muscle press it press it press it press it the more you press it the more it starts getting better not to rub it poke it none of that just pressing pressing is what helps pressure okay there was just an aside but uh, structured water is our internal battery water has an electrically charged phase like i told you but um how to create infrared inside our body make the body cold go have a cold water bath and stay in that for like 5 minutes stay in the shower for like 5 minutes or keep pouring cold water on yourself 5 minutes or sit in a bathtub with cold water want to put some ice in it go add some ice in it if you can bear it okay if you can't do that at least wash and splash your face with cold water that itself creates some little bit of infrared inside your face and signals the body to produce more structured water more energy it will give you energy after you come out of the shower you might get shivers and that's really good if you start shivering it's really really good kunal recently went to uh, krs dam and then he he took a dip in the water and then he was shivering all the way back home because of the wind so he produced a lot of infrared that day the next day he had a lot of energy because of that okay so shivering is good for you to a certain extent if you overdo the cold you'll die like the guys who die on everest okay so in addition to getting outdoors as naked as possible and getting sun we can do the following things to charge our battery keep a glass container of water in the sunlight for 10 minutes i've kept this for 10 minutes now i'm going to drink it this a, a major part of it has become structured water now this kind of water increases the structure okay then put a glass of water in the mixer with 1/4 tablespoon or teaspoon of ghee and mix it in the mixer for 30 seconds and then drink it immediately that also creates structured water okay green juices from coriander celery spinach and my are my least favorite method even though they give you structured water the problem is because of worm eggs and if you drink it raw then i told you what happens so i avoid that method but having cold water baths is a great way to recharge your battery okay exercise is a great way to recharge your battery and so is massage if you squeeze yourself also you'll recharge your battery meditation also can recharge your battery if you do something like the gayatri mantra like nine times you'll recharge your battery okay 
sound vibrations recharge your battery. So there are many ways in which we can receive energy from the environment and recharge our battery. But most people are depleting the battery. That's the kind of environment they're in. Okay, so I hope this gives you some idea. The next topic I want to talk about is the biggest toxins, which are EMF and blue light. Okay, the sun has a full spectrum of visible light, even when it's behind clouds. But when we wear spectacles, we're cutting out the purple and red light and we're taking in more blue light because all the spectacles nowadays have UV coating because somebody got scared that UV causes cancer and is bad for the body. Some uh, illegitimate studies were done and it's not true. Okay. So after that, people are very scared of UV. They want Ray-Bans. These studies are all sponsored. Okay. They're sponsored by Ray-Ban and sunscreen and all of that. They're not really, they're not really true because I, that's not been my experience. The more sun I get, the better I feel. And you can see that for yourself too. You don't need a lab to tell you that sunlight is bad for you. Okay. <clears throat> so all LED screens and light bulbs give us flickering blue light, which is worse than blue light. Okay. So this laptop gives you blue light, not my laptop. What I do? I got, can you see? What color my laptop is? I can't see because my laptop is red. Okay. Why is my laptop red? I use something called Iris Tech. And Iris Tech helps to reduce the flicker as well on the laptop. And the worst place to keep your laptop is on your lap, like Steve Jobs. Then you'll get pancreatic cancer. If you use your laptop plugged in, you're definitely going to get more EMF. Okay. As far as possible, try to use wired wired broadband connection instead of Wi-Fi, if you can do it. It's become so hard, I, I was not able to find an electrician to do this wiring in my house. That's how bad it is. Like Nobody cares about this. It's just a lot of work with not much pay. So they don't do it. Okay. And uh, your phone. If you have an iPhone, then you're very lucky. You can just turn it red. Like that. By very simple settings, you go to settings and you go to uh, color filters and there you turn on the color tint. That's it. Slide the color tint all the way to the right. Your phone turns red. But if you got Android, then you have to install an app which does this. And I'm sure there are a few apps that turn an Android red. Okay. So never use your phone plugged in and sit next to the plug using your phone. Never use your phone with the, uh, unless absolutely necessary, don't use your phone with the airplane mode off. Keep the airplane mode on all the time. Switch off the Bluetooth all the time if you're holding your phone in your hand. Then it becomes neutral. It doesn't have EMF. But it's still receiving some EMF from the Wi-Fi. So your hands will get, those of you getting joint pains in your fingers, etc. that's because of holding your phone. Mostly it'll be in your left hand if you're holding your phone in your left hand. It'll be in your right hand if you're holding your phone in your right hand. Okay, those of you getting kidney issues, it's because you put your phone in your back pocket. Those of you getting bladder issues and UTI is probably because of putting your phone in your front pocket. Okay, and it's switched uh, in the airplane mode, switched off. So be very careful with that. Uh, switch off the Wi-Fi, like I said. You no know, blue light. You you just got to do without artificial lighting at night. Yeah, then you'll have no cancer. And uh, don't use devices or artificial light after sunset. Yeah, a little cancer is as bad as stage for cancer. Okay. Nobody wants a little cancer. Little cancer, you can soak it, right? Little light is okay, right? Little cancer is okay, right? Just translate these words. When I say little light is okay, no, then I, I feel I hear it as little cancer is okay. No, it's not okay. Okay. So get red eye glasses that cut out all harmful radiations. And these, if you wear it after sunset, you'll start creating melatonin production fast. Okay. Uh, and for during the day, you can use orange glasses for your other stuff. But when I go to watch a movie, it's horrible, right? LED screen, so big. So what I do is uh, I wear a cap, I wear a hoodie, I wear a mask, I wear orange glasses, and I wear full sleeve jacket and cover my legs fully. And I put my hands sleeves inside and then I watch the movie. And people are like, why is this guy watching the movie without revealing its identity? I don't care, okay? Because they don't know who I am. Good. 
So that's how I watch a movie if I have to. If it's a really Hollywood movie, I like movies, so I will go watch it. But this is how I, I do it to protect myself. If I go to the mall, I'm dressed like that with the mask. Now the mask is acceptable. So mask and orange glasses and people are like, whoa, what's up with this guy? But I don't care. That's how I will go. If I ever have to go, I hate malls and never go. Okay. So stay fully clothed at night. If you have a lot of weird lights about, stay fully clothed at night. In the daytime, be as naked as possible. And uh, maintain continue. Yeah, just do these things and watch it. This one slide, if you do, you'll watch your mood and chronic diseases disappear. Okay. All right. Uh, sorry, I have I have to go on a little more today because you know it's important. Now this one, the blueprint of your life is your internal story. Can you hear that? No. Wow, my mic is so good. All right. Why do people take the silences off their bike to make themselves feel like they're in a war? I have no idea. It's a very stressful sound to have up your ass. What's going on? Anyway, your story so far might not have been so heroic. Most people get into dead-end jobs and market. Um, sorry, marriage is, sorry, not market. <laughs> not much difference there. Okay, marriages. Because that's all they're educated and equipped them for. They don't know anything better than that. If you're in this boat, don't worry. It's not your fault and you can fix it easily. Make time to daydream about your future. Find an evil to defeat and go to war against it with the help of qualified mentors. I decided to go to war against ignorance and with my guru's help, I'm fighting it like a hero. I want people in the world to be happy again. What do you think happens biologically in my body? My body can sense the direction in which we are going by... You know, in your body, not my body, I'm sorry. The body can sense the direction in which we are going by the neurotransmitters and areas of the brain used by our thoughts. So the body understands your story and then it creates a future. It fortifies us to face the dangers that are coming up. But if you're fortifying yourself and all you're telling your body is that the environment outside is horrible and is not supportive to life. Then it prepares you for that future, which is death. Okay. So a future starts getting formed when you have, when you, you decide to fight an evil. You decide to fight an evil. Okay. A future starts getting formed. Your body starts preparing you for that war. Then you become, you look like a warrior. Even if you don't work out like me, I, I work out only on Fridays. I do this small grandfather workout for one hour that's it okay like it's for old people that's the kind of workout i do but my body retains its shape like a warrior because i've gone to war against ignorance the body can't so i noticed this right cats don't exercise monkeys don't exercise horses don't exercise they are fitter than me why because exercise is not what makes you fit what makes you fit is your story a horse is a horse, so I understand it's a horse. I have to run, so I have to be fit. A cat is a cat. It has to climb stuff, so I have to climb stuff. I have to be fit. Same with the monkey, Malabar squirrel. Anything else that you admire in the animal world, the eagle. It's like that because it has to be like that because that's part of its story. It's biological story. Okay, so when I say I'm going to fight a certain injustice in this world, which is ignorance, and I feel that it's everyone's birthright to have knowledge, and I want to fight this in the world, my body starts getting ready to be that warrior. I can easily pick up any weapon and fight anything. Okay. So this story is what people miss. The blueprint of your life, your internal story. Your body is created according to the internal story. If your body has created a useless looking body, that's because you haven't got a future. You haven't decided anything. So body is forming in any which way. With any kind of distortions happening. Okay. You want an undistorted, focused, beautiful body? You have to be part of a story. Okay? So, when you believe in a future, your brain places it on a future timeline and revs up the body to reach there. People without a clear long-term future have a broken blueprint and the body doesn't know what to, what to get ready for. So, they fall sick and they die. 
If you don't have anything to get your body ready for, you'll never have health. Meditative practices of Siddha Yoga allow us to create a clear long-term future, which we believe in. And that's what I focus in all the time. So first thing that I focus on in my students is that they get a blueprint of their life. But if they're not doing all these other things, like avoiding toxins in their environment and getting the right kind of energy into their body, then seriously, I can't help them. Okay. If you need any more guidance, take a screenshot of this slide. My name is Guru Pashupati. That's my number. Please WhatsApp your WhatsApp and introduce yourself with your name, age, city, and occupation, and then tell me what help you need, and I'll help you. Okay. So that's it. That's the end of the session. If you have any questions, I'm ready to answer you. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, let's see. Yeah, Catherine says we grow avocado here in New Zealand. But uh, I wonder how your body re receives it. You know, anyway, if you're in New Zealand, you've been uh, displaced from Northern Europe to, to New Zealand anyway. So maybe your body is adapted. So please uh, have a black box attitude towards foods. Try it, stop it. Check when you were eating it, how do you feel? Check when you stop it, how you feel. And then you can make your decisions on food. Personally, I wouldn't eat avocado. Okay. Then what about nuts for vegetarians? Yes, nuts do have fats, but they're not like dripping in fats like uh, uh, cheese or ghee or whatever. Okay. I mean, nuts are certainly better than anything. Being non-vegetarian is better than everything for this case. And... Um, is there a way to cover LED lights and TVs at the replacements? No, there's no way. It just There is no covers for LED lights. Nobody's inventing this, Prashant, because they, they don't know the harm of it. And the last ones to admit that their product is faulty will be the manufacturers. And if somebody starts manufacturing a light over it, then the joy out of watching TV will go, like my laptop. There's no joy in using my laptop. That's why I don't use it. That's a good thing because I made it completely red. There's no joy in using it. Okay. Blue light gives you, it's like sugar. It, it is literally sugar. It creates sugar in your body. Blue light goes in. Uh... <laughs> nice Carissa upside down. Yeah, you told me about it. Okay. So blue light, blue light comes and uh, creates sugar in your body and also insulin. Okay. It's crazy. Just light. You don't need anything. You're photosynthesizing glucose, just like the plant. Did you know your eukaryotes and you're related? And you have the same kind of stuff like in plants and you can... Oh, wow, you're back now. Good. So we have the same things like plants. We can generate glucose in our body with blue light. So we're just blue lighting ourselves and wondering why we have diabetes. It's so stupid. Okay. Is it okay to eat fried eggs half an hour after waking up? Yes, it is. Uh, red glasses manufacturer has some LED blocking strips on his website. Yeah, is that good? Yeah, it might be good. We'll have to check it up. Then you'll only have the flicker. So I don't know what it blocks. Put it on and if there's no change, if it still looks nice and bright and you're getting blue light, then obviously it's not working, right? A lot of the filters on Android are like that. They do nothing. They just give a slight yellow tint and then the blues are still there. You can still see the blue. If you make your screen red, you will not be able to see blue on your screen. Okay. All right. Using organic A2 milk and whey protein for vegetarians early in the morning. Is it okay to use? Yeah, yeah, it's okay to use. But uh, try and try and eat some butter or something. Just a stick of butter. Just eat that. That's better for the electrons early in the morning. Okay. Then protein, because protein, whey protein has removed all the fat from it. There's no fat anymore. Uh, so that's the problem. Okay. All right. Any other questions or are we done for today? I know it's been a long session. Are we done? Does anybody have any other questions? Go ahead and shoot it. And if you need any other help, you know my WhatsApp number. Okay. Adding peanut butter to it. Okay. God. Okay. All the things I wouldn't eat, but yeah, what else to do? All right. Because peanut butter, you know, peanuts in general have a lot of fungus in them. Just like coffee. Yeah, but if you got good redox, yeah, you can handle it. So make sure that you get a lot of sunlight and you can just handle it. 
a lot of the vegetarian food is contaminated with toxins. So I, I mostly don't eat vegetables. I try to avoid it. After I read in the Bhagavad Gita, there was absolutely no doubt in my mind. Because Krishna says a sattvic diet has to have fat and water. Lots of water. It's got to be juicy. He said, juicy with a lot of fat content. That, that doesn't describe any vegetarian food. Okay? So, now we know what, what the warriors used to eat. Okay. Good. In the ancient times. Seasonal means according to Ayurveda, as we get all vegetables in all seasons. Uh, please contact your farmers and then you'll know. You know, I buy directly from the farmers. We don't get all vegetables in all seasons. A lot of them have been uh, uh, post-produced with artificial conditions. Okay. Like some vegetables only grow when it's rainy. But then you protect that from rain and you grow it. So you need to be in, in touch a little bit. You can't get all vegetables in all seasons. Whatever you can grow in your house, you know, that you can eat. You can buy the same thing from outside and eat. So it's a little bit of, somebody has to make this chart, man. Don't give me this work also, okay? So whoever wants to go and make the chart, go and make the chart, I'll share it. I'm not going to sit and make a chart of what is seasonal in India. And then, then there's like, it's this much work if you can't do for your health, it's a bit of a problem. So uh, I know that right now, you know, you can get gourds and you can get uh, stuff that need a lot of water because it's raining right here, okay? Things that will die with water are not what you should be eating right now. But anyway, if you get your circadian rhythm right, then you have a feeling. You know, I can't explain it to you. I don't need charts. I can hold a vegetable and get a feeling whether I should eat this or not. There's something in me because I've got my circadian rhythm going. I don't need to read from somewhere whether I can eat this or not. I have senses. When I touch it itself, I get a feeling that whether I should eat it or not. Now, how to develop this? Get a lot of sun. Practice a lot of yoga. And then you'll also become sensitive to all light. I'm also sensitive to EMF. I'm sensitive to noise. I'm sensitive to blue light. And I, I, I live like a worm after sunset. I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm inside. Inside my burrow. I'm not coming out. And exposing myself to other lights. And when I have to travel, I really, of course, have to cover myself up from all these radiations. If you're doing a long flight or something, what to do? Flights are even worse. There's so much EMF up there. To recover from a flight, people take 15 days. Like if you take a long flight, like from Europe to here, you take 15 to 20 days to recover and it worsens everything in your body. Whatever symptoms you have get worse for about 15 days after you take a flight. So... Uh, going in a metal box, the cars, that's also uh, generating EMF. You know why? It's got those uh, strips of metal on the wheels and they rotate. And when the strips of steel rotate, that also generates EMF. So you need to step out of your car and recover from the sun, taking off your shirt. That's what I do. I stop my car. I don't care where. If I'm feeling too much of that EMF, I go and I get recovery and I come back. That's when I do long drives. Okay, so when you're sensitive, you know that you're getting overdosed and you know that you're getting overdosed on what? EMF feels different, blue light feels different, toxins feel different, out of season vegetables feel different. You'll be able to sense this with your body. You want to get there, start learning yoga. Okay, that you contact me and start learning yoga. Those of you who are in my course, don't contact me again. Just, just practice what I've taught you and just the mantras I've taught you Will, will create this kind of sensitivity where you'll be able to sense. But you don't practice, right? You learned a mantra, you took the diksha and then uh, carefully put the mantra and the frame it and keep it in your puja room. And after that, no need to repeat it again. No need to practice it. No need to get that vibration. No need to know what it feels. But if you start repeating any of the mantras I teach you, you'll start getting sensitive. And uh, this sensitivity is priceless. Okay? Any other questions? So instead of making a huge list and uh, chart, just get sensitive. It's not that difficult. If you don't have any mantra, just practice Gayatri Mantra. Look at the sun, sit in the sun, practice the Gayatri Mantra. And then you'll start getting sensitive. Just let those vibrations sit in you. 
and you will know oh there's something here i can sense magnetism on the road and you know there are these underground electric cables sometimes i can sense it i can see it i can even see emf because i have awakened my insect eyes by practicing shambhavi mudra okay so if you want to see stuff then you do shambhavi mudra which is this basically this you're taking your eyes towards here it takes a lot of muscular strength to hold it there and some of you might get headaches in the beginning but that's okay keep practicing and when you're able to smoothly hold shambhavi mudra for long periods of time like half an hour and all when while you chant your mantra for the next half an hour and then you open yourself suddenly you'll be seeing more you'll be like whoa 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 why does why is my mic giving you you know waves and waves of something what is this you'll see the emf from your mic you see the emf from the laptop you see the, i can see all the emf i'm sitting in it and i know i can't sit here long so i'm going to switch off everything now i'm done does anybody have any other questions great okay so i'm going to close for today thank you very much om namah shivaya